welcome to this review of my IROX K76M Fun Keyboard. <laughs> yeah, not my choice of name either. <laughs> this was a donation from a viewer. Thanks again, May. The IROX is something I've been wanting to cover for ages, actually, so it's nice to see this one sent in. There's a surprising amount of history behind this keyboard too, believe it or not. The switch it uses, known simply as the IROX switch, was developed by Alps.tw in conjunction with the manufacturer over a period of two years. Now, for those who know a little bit about vintage mechanical keyboards, Alps.tw is a name that might ring a bell, as he's one of the old masters of the Asian keyboard community, so to speak, with other heavyweights such as Sandy and Mousefan. They all did research on, and wrote extensively about, vintage keyboards years before they caught on in the West. Much of the stuff that's been uncovered recently-ish in the Western community has been known in Asia for 10 years or so, and their research has greatly helped my own in the past. Alps.tw in particular has lent his name to two dozen or so Alps clone switches that he meticulously catalogued and categorized. So basically this is a dude who knows his stuff. Therefore, when he announced his self-developed brand of Alps-inspired switches about four years ago, I got quite excited, as did several others obviously. But the hype kind of died out when it became clear that this was going to be an Asia-only thing. And moreover, the keyboard, like other products from IROX, who make other zany stuff as well, is kind of weird. <laughs> Slightly off-putting even. More on that in a bit. Now, I said before that these are Alps-inspired, because it's far from a straight-up clone. Instead, it's more of a modern take on what Alps switches might look like if they would come out today. Now, there are linear, tactile, and clicky versions of this switch, and this one comes with arguably the most interesting of the three, the clicky ones, which have a light blue bottom housing. There are also extra lightweight clicky ones with a white housing, though. Now, it shares some characteristics with Alp switches, the boxy shape of the housing, for example, and the fact that it's got a click leaf, although it's shaped quite differently from the original Alps ones. The rest of the parts of the switch are more difficult to recognize. It's got the open contacts of an Alps clone or Mattia switch, albeit consisting of three parts rather than two, a transparent top housing with support for a built-in LED, which the original clicky Alps switches couldn't do as the clicker took up the space of the LED, and perhaps most interesting for many of my viewers, an actual MX mount slider. It's even got dampeners on it, which look more like vertically slung O-rings than the built-in figure of eight rubber cushions dampened Alps used. It's also just as big of a bitch to put the switches back together again as simplified Alps. Putting these contacts back in housing is a fucking nightmare. In fact, I think this might even be worse. And this is in contrast to the switch plates of complicated Alps, which greatly ease this process, and which are a jiffy to put back together again. So it's not the clone of complicated blue Alps that me and some other people have been anxiously waiting for, but more of an adapted, modernized take on simplified white Alps, plus dampeners, of course. And by the way, that means that, yeah, this is an actual dampened clicky switch, perhaps the only commercially made one I've ever seen. So because they use a completely different clicker from Cherry MX and even click bars, they feel and sound completely different. But because they're also not the same as either complicated or simplified Alps, it kind of stands alone in a way. So just to be clear, this is not an Alps clone switch. It's an entirely new, albeit Alps-inspired, design, and I'll be comparing it to all the things I just mentioned. First, and let's be honest, foremost, it's definitely not the same as Blue Alps. It's got a sharper tactility, and it feels like there's less resistance at the bottom, so it actually feels more like simplified Alps than Blue Alps. It's lighter as well, weighted at 60 grams at the tactile bump rather than 70. Now, the feeling is not dissimilar. It's got a very click-leafy feel to it, but it's still not quite a carbon copy or anything. A bigger difference is in the sound, which are, in my opinion, a very important part of the Alps experience. Now, normally, a true side-by-side -side comparison is quite difficult like this, but thankfully I've got a small Alps switch tester, as well as two keycaps that are identical, except one is Alps mount and the other is MX mount. For reference, they're Focus double shots. Focus used both MX and Alps mount switches in their keyboards, hence why these are the same. And the IROC switches are clearly quieter, but also higher pitched.
When you include the chassis, which is a major part of the sound of a switch, the difference becomes considerably more telling. Yeah, it's, it's not even close really, is it? Compared to Cherry MX, they feel much more tactile, obviously, and I think that's a good thing, but the sound is kind of so-so. For a click leaf switch, you'd expect a landslide victory here, but I don't think it is. Listen to this. The Cherry MX switch sounds more rattly, sure, and more plasticky, but the IROCs have a distinctly tinny quality to them, as if the click leaves were made out of tin foil. I think it's because the dampeners take away the clack of the switch sound, so the only thing that's left is the sound of the clicker, which tends to be relatively high pitched in many switches. So because Cherry MX Blue still has a clack, it sounds bassier than these. But perhaps most interesting is the comparison to click bar switches. Now, in hand, click bar switches tend to sound extremely high pitched, but in a chassis, this becomes a lot better. And indeed, even with the tiny chassis of the keyboardio Atrius and with its shallower keycaps, it sounds way bassier. Although the IROX don't click as loudly on the upstroke as click bar switches do. By the way, for reference, these are box white switches. Feel-wise, it feels noticeably sharper and more tactile than box white switches, but not as much as box jades, although that shouldn't be too much of a surprise as those are their second or third most tactile switches I've ever tried. Now, from what I understood, it took a bit of back and forth with manufacturers to develop this, because, of course, they didn't want to develop a switch that cost a million billion to make per unit. So, some compromises were made, and it would appear that one of the compromises was that they stuck it on a LEGO keyboard. That's right, this is a LEGO compatible top plate. Now, you could also get a bunch of replacement plates because the top clips out, but this is just weird. I think it's one of the things that might have scared some people off of trying it, at least here in the West. And, you know, I used to love Lego as a kid, but now it just looks strange and, frankly, the little pips in the plate feel uncomfortable for your fingers. The rest of the board kind of speaks volumes about this project. Even though it wasn't cheap, even now it's $83 for an equivalent model from Amazon, it comes with the cheapest and ugliest double shots you can get. I've seen these in a bunch of other keyboards as well, and they're instantly recognizable because of that stenciled font, which is absolutely hideous. The RGB is also very bad, the refresh rate is so low that it's actually visible, and the light bundling is turbo crap so the colours appear curdled. Look how much the colours separate from under the keycaps. Also, the light distribution through the keycaps is very bad, so they appear splotched. So I keep it on this blue colour, which I think suits it best, and the curdled cyan in the middle almost looks good on it, I guess. The build quality though is, even though it's plastic and does flex a bit, quite decent and it feels relatively solid. And <laughs> frankly, if you buy this keyboard for anything other than the switches, you're kind of doing it wrong. Overall, it's not a bad keyboard. The switches feel pretty okay, perhaps not revolutionary or even a match for the vintage option, but a damn sight better than MX Blue in my opinion. But the switches are the only thing you're buying this board for and the Lego thing is just weird. 
Plus, I don't think they're better than click bar switches, and those have better options right now. So, they're decent, competent switches really, but not the second coming you may have been hoping for. And frankly, if you wanted a clicky Alps board that's in production, Matthias is a closer fit to the original, even though that's not without its weaknesses either. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.